Today I'm going to take a quick look at a Linux distribution that I've never looked at before. This distribution, it is a live distribution, meaning that it's designed to run, for example, on a live USB stick. It's not really designed to be installed on a system. It's designed to be portable. You carry it around with you. It's designed to run on very minimal resources, very minimal disk space. This Linux distribution is called Mini OS. So Mini OS is based on Debian. It's a Debian-based Linux distribution, and they had a new release just a week or two ago, and they are basing off the latest Debian, Debian 13, codenamed Trixie. And when you go and download a ISO for Mini OS, they have three different editions. You have Standard, Toolbox, and Ultra. And they all have slightly different requirements as far as specs, but the Standard Edition, I guess, is the smallest ISO because it's just your basic Linux desktop with some standard Linux desktop desktop programs on it, but there's no real specialty tools for this uh, as far as it doesn't have like any kind of like network management tools and things like this. This is just for your normal desktop Linux user. And you can see the minimum system requirements. They recommend 768 megabytes of RAM. Now, technically, they say you could run it with less RAM than that, but if you run it with less than 768 megabytes of RAM, performance is going to be an issue. But realistically, Pretty much everyone's going to have at least 768 megabytes of RAM. That is extremely small uh, RAM requirements. The only difference between the Mini OS standard toolbox and ultra editions is really the disk space involved when you're, you know, writing to a USB drive. So they recommend 800 megabytes of space for Mini OS, but if you want, you can try the Toolbox Edition. Now, this has more of your network diagnostic tools, network administration tools, and all of that. You can see this is a specialized Linux distribution for maintenance, diagnostic, and recovery of computer systems. And this one requires 1.2 gigabytes of space. And then finally, we have the Mini OS Ultra Edition, which requires 1.7 gigabytes of space. And this is an extensive set of software tools designed for both maintenance and diagnostics of computer systems and for solving a wide range of office tasks. So I guess it's got a lot of uh, office uh, programs as well. So that is the Ultra Edition. For purposes of the video today, I'm going to take a look at the Standard Edition. Now, I'm not going to burn the ISO to a USB stick and run it off a USB stick. I think I'm just going to run it inside a virtual machine. So I'm going to mount the ISO inside a VM and take a look at it there. So when you boot into Mini OS, you've got a couple of options here, and this is very important. One of the cool things with Mini OS is they claim to have persistent storage. So persistent storage is, you know, a lot of times when you're running things off a live USB stick or live CD, you know, some kind of live Linux distribution, when you save a file, for example, or download something or whatever it happens to be, you know, that is not really stored to a hard drive in any way. It's not permanent, meaning if I unplug the USB stick and then come back and boot into the operating system later, everything that I was working on as far as any documents I created, any documents I downloaded, they're all gone. But with persistent storage, you can go back to a previous session and have it remember the uh, documents you were working on, the documents you created, etc. So you have the option to restore or resume a previous session or start a new session. For me, I don't have any previous sessions anyway, so I'll just start a new session. And it boots us into our desktop environment. It looks like they're using XFCE for the desktop environment. And uh, on physical hardware, you wouldn't have to do this, but inside a virtual machine, I do need to change the screen resolution. So I'm going to run the xrander command. So I'm going to do xrander space dash s for set 1920 by 1080. So let's go ahead and get a proper 1920 by 1080 screen resolution. And I've got to say the live environment here looks very nice. A, kind of a minimalist kind of design. I like the wallpaper. Very clean. I really like the uh, panel at the bottom. You know, it's got a rather large thick panel, but I think it's okay. It's not too big. You got nice icons. I really like their branding, the Mini OS logo, and then you've got your familiar XFCE menu system. Now remember, Mini OS had three different editions. You had the standard, the toolbox, and the ultra edition. I went with the standard edition. So if I go to all applications, I'm not going to have all that much here, right? I've got mainly just your standard XFCE stuff, the XFCE settings and preferences kind of stuff. You do have standard programs like the XFCE 
uh, text editor, which is Mousepad. In this case, they are running Mousepad 0 0.6.3, uh, rather normal kind of plain text editor, not much to it. You do have some programs here at the front. I guess these are uh, like favorite applications, web browser. I'm not sure what browser they're using. So let's go ahead and launch it. It looks like they're using Firefox for the browser. That makes sense. And then if we go to help and about Firefox, we're on Firefox extended support release. So this is the ESR version of Firefox version 128.14.0. Let's close that out. Other favorite applications here. We've got the terminal emulator, which I've already opened to run the XRanger command. The file manager, of course, is Thunar, the file manager for the XFCE desktop environment. This is Thunar 4.20.2. I really hate the plain brown <laughs> icons. You know, the panel looks really good, you know, the theming here, but yeah, the uh, the really ugly poopy brown icons, I think they could do a better icon set. Really outside of the XFCE, like, standard settings and preference tools you don't have a lot of applications here under accessories i mean we have our archive manager our task manager our screenshot utility under graphics we have an image viewer ristretto the standard image viewer for xfce under the internet category all we have is firefox under multimedia we have volume control so we don't even really have a multimedia player here out of the box so very, very minimal distribution. Now let's talk about persistence because that is one of the coolest features for mini OS. So let's actually test out the persistence. So let me open a terminal and let me zoom way in. And if I do an LS here, this is your standard home directory. There really isn't anything here. If I do a long form uh, LS, you can actually see, you know, you know there's not a whole lot of here. You got some hidden files and directories, but let's create some test files. So I'm going to touch test one, test two, and test three. And now when I do an LS, I have these three empty files here. And normally when you do a live distribution, if I re rebooted the machine, right, or unplugged the USB stick and then put it back in and you know, booted back into the USB stick, these files would not be here. But because of the persistent storage, Theoretically, they should be here if I reboot. So let's do a reboot. Uh, reboot command not found. Now, reboot's not a standard command in Linux. It's usually an alias to systemctl reboot. So in this case, I guess I got to type the full command, systemctl reboot. And that worked. And now instead of start a new session, if I start a new session, those files won't be there. But resume previous session, it would be interesting also to see if it remembers my xrender command. Remember setting the uh, screen resolution? I think that's probably asking too much to remember the screen resolution. Yeah, it didn't remember the screen resolution, so, but that's fine. Let me go ahead and run the xrender-s 1920 by 1080 one more time. And now let me also full screen our terminal emulator, zoom in. If I do an ls, ah, oh, look. Test one, test two, and test three are here. So it did restore the session properly, right? So it did have persistent storage. And this is very important if you want to come back to a document that you created or a document you've been editing, or in some cases on uh, in the web browser, if you download a document, download a PDF or something, you know, when you go back to your previous session, you know, theoretically that downloaded PDF would still be there. Let me clear the terminal. Let's check and see what kernel we're on here with this release of mini OS. So we're on kernel 6.12.41. Now what would be interesting to check because it's such a minimal distribution is Pipewire here. So let's do a where is Pipewire. Pipewire is not installed. I didn't expect it would be. And I certainly wouldn't expect a where is Flatpak to return anything. Yeah, so neither Pipewire nor Flatpak is installed. And obviously we're running X11 as our display server rather than Wayland because this is XFCE, which really doesn't have any Wayland support yet. So, and being a Debian based distribution, it does use the apt package manager. For example, if I needed to install something that isn't here, you know, I could sudo apt install, and I don't know if Vim is installed or not, but I could install it. And it says unable to locate the package Vim, probably because I do probably need to sync the mirrors. It's the very first time me using the package manager. So now that I've done that, if I up arrow sudo apt install Vim now actually works and I will have Vim at least for this session. 
but remember it's persistent so as long as I resume the session the next time I log in I will still have my Vim here hopefully. I wonder if HTOP is installed. If I run HTOP, HTOP is installed. You can see we're using about 661 megs of the uh, six gigs of RAM that I gave this uh, virtual machine to work with. Um, let's go ahead and quit out of that. One other thing I want to do is let me up arrow. I'm going to sudo apt emacs as well. So I installed Vim. I wasn't sure if Vim was already installed or not, but I'm quite certain they wouldn't ship emacs out of the box on this. So I'm going to go ahead and install emacs. And then what I want to do is I want to test the persistence one more time. I want to do a system CTL reboot and see if both Vim and Emacs are here on the reboot. So Emacs is installed. If I launched it, it's just going to be a plain, ugly, vanilla Emacs window. Let's go ahead and do a system CTL reboot. And let's resume previous session. So let me go ahead and launch the terminal. I wonder if they have the Control Alt T key binding for the terminal. They do. Many distributions have that set. Control Alt T a lot of times will bring up a terminal. Let me zoom in and let's try to run the commands for the programs I installed on the previous session. Emacs. Emacs is here. Awesome. And of course, Vim would be here as well. Let me quit out of that. Uh, yeah. Let me quit without writing. Yeah, I really like this, this mini OS. Not much to it, but that's the point, right? Not much to it. I wonder if they have any other wallpapers. So if I go to desktop settings, yeah, they have a lot of other wallpapers. I imagine these are the wallpapers for the other editions. Uh, so maybe for the toolbox edition or the ultra edition. Uh, yeah. So you got different colors other than blue. You got purple, orange, green. For me, yeah, I think I'm just going to go with the mini OS branded wallpaper. Yeah, I, I think that looks sharp. I think in a world where a lot of Linux distributions kind of struggle finding their lane, finding their niche, I think mini OS, it really knows what it wants to do and it does it well. So job well done, developers of mini OS. It's a distribution I'll certainly follow along with, you know, future development and try out in the future. I may actually keep a live USB stick of mini OS uh, available, uh, you know, in my laptop bag or something, because I do like Debian based distributions and a, a portable based Debian with persistent storage. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode Matt Steve, 40 Millimeter, Kept Caveman, Darloff Lee, Jersey Killer, Mark, Methos, Urion, Paul, Peace Arch, and Redora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Morgento, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at mini OS would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software like mini OS, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.